obviously in the high growth area, I look at everybody trying to hire quickly because of the increased demand. A lot of within those increased demand uh, for the new hires or even the, the uh, recent talent change uh, going on, they are needing to um, revamp and get more different training itself. So the, if they're trying to look at it and keeping up with the uh, product demand, the quality and trying to get more market share. So when I go back to uh, looking at what we're trying to do over the next 12 months, you know, they're gonna increase a lot more hiring, I believe, in the high growth area. And so they're making sure um, their training could be a little bit better. Um, succession planning is there as well. It's, it's, it's a, a, a well-known fact that growth brings with it a host of other opportunities, also called challenges. Uh, but those are, those are good compared to trying to determine how to restart the line after people have been gone for a month. I think we would all agree. In 2021, over 44% of M&D companies plan to prioritize acquiring and retaining talent. I think it's also important to know, not, not just that the, the return uh, put some pressure on the employment numbers, if you will, or those who, who we want to employ. You know, it also uh, results in those companies spending what it takes to get them there, but also after they're there to keep them there, which may be benefits, uh, other changes uh, to, to, to attract and retain. Uh, to find and keep quality talent, over 40% of M&D companies plan to raise their compensation. Uh, this is the most preferred strategy. Uh, training and development and offering temporary to full-time positions were number two and three on the list, respectively. Only 8% of the companies plan to offer flexible or remote work arrangements, and likely due to the labor-intensive nature of the work. Some industries flex more than others, and some are able to flex more than others. Uh, if a particular line is open for eight hours, someone has got to be on that line, whether that's split between two part-times or one FTE, but manufacturing likely faces more challenges in that than other businesses. Uh, Jeff, your thoughts on that? Um, you know, looking at the increased compensation, that you're gonna look at, uh, obviously we said before, retaining, but also looking at, you know, are they being budgeted for potential bonuses? Uh, is there, I've had other clients uh, that may have done a sign-on bonus as well. And then they have a 90 day, six month review. So there's various ways that have been tied to the KPIs of that position. It could be a plant uh, management position or uh, the front office position as well. And I think we also talked about, you know, um, there's ways of starting internship programs as well. That's part of your enhanced training or development program that can be expanded. That'll even go into the succession planning that is needed. Because you've got a lot of people that are aging out, you know, especially in manufacturing. Are they getting the new skills that they need from young people coming in? Are they getting interested? So we've had that discussions over the last many years uh, going through all this. So it's uh, it's been interesting from a cross training. Will they do it? Can they do it? You know, uh, flexible hours are not really apparent with manufacturing, maybe the front office, yes, but not some production like we all know. But it, it's been an interesting first quarter, no doubt.